What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Cork to Glory, this is episode number 25. And we start today's episode off with Sheffield Wednesday, the Owls coming to take us on in Ireland on the back of our 2-2 draw at Vicarage Road against Watford. Our last game here at home as well was our first victory of the season, the win over Birmingham City. So I was feeling pretty confident of having another game where we could notch up a three points in the bag, get ourselves our second victory of the season. And 30 minutes in, I was in attack mode for the very first minute. And as Bell Bell drills it into the top corner, we take the lead. And this was just one of those games where like the confidence was flowing. I just felt extremely optimistic about our chance of getting our second win in three and right before the break a chance to double our lead and oh <laughs> it's terrible goalkeeping but it's happened once again Leo Leo big Leo gets another goal Cork City 2 Sheffield Wednesday nil already his second goal of the season unsurprisingly both coming from corners lead doubled extended and we're two goals up right before the breaks so in the second I'll still leading my two looking for a third goal what a ball this was by Rory Keenan as Cunningham tries to round the goalkeeper, taken down uh, by Wildsmith there. Definite penalty, no doubt about it, and a chance to make it free from the spot. Samuel Bell, Bell would stand up and take it, of course. Goes to Wildsmith's right and sends him the wrong way as well. Bell, Bell at the double. Cork free, Sheffield Wednesday nearly against one of those games where I felt incredibly confident. I feel like after last season, what we saw, you know, being undefeated all season long in the league, in League One in Ireland, I think this season, if we are to secure Secure stability and possibly break into the top half of the table. We need to have this sort of home record again. We can't be dropping points at home. And in games against teams that are below us in the table or around us in the table, when we're in Ireland, we've got to target the three points and get the victory. So no, uh, no losses in our last three games and seven points picked up from nine. Really, really great to see back-to-back -back wins at home as well. Delighted with that. And uh, as Morrissey accepts another bid here for Gerard Morrissey, the uh, well, the official club captain. Now we know there's a new era here after we gave the captaincy to Rory Keenan now. Uh, we also changed Jamie Bowden's position as well. No overall increase for the former Spurs midfielder, but now he's official centre-back. And I, I think I've made the right choice there as well. I know his strength is really poor at 56. That's why I've given him the defensive centre-back development plan so that can get trained pretty quickly. Um, but his defensive stats are pretty decent. Again, the, the lack of aerial physicality is the only concern the lack of good jumping good strength uh, good heading as well but if we can just improve those stats he's already got decent passing stats as a ball playing center half he looks really really decent it's just about training up the uh, the weaker areas in the center half role and I think he and Leo could be a really formidable partnership we know Leo's the strong one we know Leo's the big one and now you want Jamie as a technical one and can play out from the back so second game of nine in today's episode away from home and on the back of again seven points picked up from nine well let's just say I was taken down to earth in this game Alexander Mitrovic and Neil Mapai with the goals in this one as Brighton get to win by two goals to nil and our mini undefeated run is over hardly a surprise though you know Brighton are the best team in the division Graham Potter's side obviously going down to the championship I think they're going to run away with the championship this year I really do I know there's some decent teams in this league but I think Brighton are probably like head and shoulders above everyone to be honest here in this division and um, we also trained uh, retrained Gillies as well our holding mid to attacking midfielder he grew 10 ratings as well is he the new Jay Potts well I guess we'll have to wait and see and also we saw that Morrissey has indeed been sold as well right before the goal destroyed there against Bristol City as we get back to undefeated ways view. yeah Morrissey is gonna go in January he's off to Saudi Arabia I believe so I'll make sure I give him a farewell game in December have him as captain and yeah it's, it's a new era at Cork City man it's a new era it's sad to let him go but look Keenan is now the captain here Barry's the vice Leo's the third in command it's a new era for Cork City here and on the back of the 1-0 loss of the city ground here as you could see two defeats in three slid down the table a little bit of 16th place two points above the drop where QPR Preston and Huddersfield occupy the bottom three but that's not bad, though, to start the campaign off. 11 games in, you know, approaching the quarter, uh, quarter mark. Quarter mark? Quarter the way through the season here. You know, being being above the drop zone, having a few teams below us right now before the bottom three, I'll take that. You know, I said at the start of the season, what I'm looking for here is security and stability in the championship. Yeah, it's been an inconsistent start of the season, say the very least, but it's not been too bad whatsoever. That my biggest fear was, like, after the tough start we had, 
being like several points adrift of safety after like 15, 16 games. As things stand, touch wood, bar an almighty collapse, we should be able to avoid that. And you saw the fixtures that are coming this month as well. We've got some favourable fixtures coming this month too, so hopefully we'll get a couple more wins on the board. And also after some more scouting, we had an academy update here. I did release a couple of players. I mentioned before I'm being incredibly selective now uh, with the players that I keep in my academy and put in my academy initially as well. Basically, if the potential range doesn't show them guaranteed having over 81 potential, I'm probably going to release them because, of course, 81 plus is showing great potential. Now we've got Reese as our top class scout, four star, five star. I, I think we can afford to be a little bit more picky, a little bit more fussy with the youth players we put into our academy now. I don't want players coming out of the academy with no potential whatsoever. We know how hard it is to have players with, like, you know, exciting prospects, for example. That's what I'm looking for now exciting prospects and hopefully touch wood as well some potential to special players as well still following that we had our following game today and our first of the month Brentford the Bees coming to take us on again one of the stronger teams in the division here at Turner's Cross where we're still undefeated to start the campaign off and whilst there was no Ivan Tony for Brentford I thought I'd show you up before the game he's been sold to Osasuna uh, he's gone to Spain there so outside the Premier League and the Championship now going to Osasuna I wonder if he's tearing up La Liga with 40 goals perhaps who knows but taking on the Bees, it turns out they didn't need the shocker in this game whatsoever. They scored the first. We hit the woodwork. We've hit the woodwork a lot to begin this campaign off. So unlucky. But late on in the game, Brentford wrap up the points. 2-0 the final score. And our first defeat in Ireland in the league this season. Look, I knew for sure we wouldn't have an undefeated home campaign all season long in the league. Obviously, we lost to Pompey in the cup earlier. But in the league, I knew we'd lose to someone. I'm just kind of disappointed it happened so early there. Brentford get the win. And our undefeated start at home at Turner's Cross in the championship has now been ended by... The be so following that we had Preston away at Deepdale and this needed to be a win man this had to be a win Preston right now in the relegation zone obviously we're way better in Ireland than we are in England but I knew that this would not be a good result if we failed to get all three 14 minutes in still deadlocked at 0-0 and oh they just caused so much chaos man they caused so much chaos our new club captain Rory Keenan first goal of the season but he didn't get credited with the assist, but he kind of caused it. Leo Yates flicks on the corner. And I'm telling you, man, those those corners that we do, they remind me so much of Rory Delap's long throw-ins for Stoke City in the Tony Pulis era back in the... Um, the late noughties um, in the Premier League, they're just, they're really, really hard to defend because what, what you don't see is that if, if the corner doesn't result in a goal, you know, nine times out of ten, and I mean this, nine times out of ten, we get possession back in our favour and get a second chance because the goalkeepers, they, they literally never claim it. They literally never, ever, ever claim it because there's just too much pressure for them to catch the ball cleanly. So they either fist it away or they misjudge the fly or it's headed away and the ball comes back into our possession it's so rare that the corner is always dealt with completely and the danger is completely away they're just fantastic man again they remind me so much of Rory Delap's long throws for Stoke all those years ago you know it's like these are like Rory Delap's long throws version 2 like they're really really hard to stop and I absolutely love them so no assist for Leo in the game but Keenan gives us a massive game winner there but sadly away from home looking for back to back away wins here for the first time this season Lyndon Dyke scores the only goal of the game as QPR our former career Real mode team get the win there by a goal to nil and a big three points for the R's there as they try and pull away from the drop zone so back to losing ways there one nil I can't see us picking up back to back away wins all season long really we're just not that great in England so yeah one nil QPR and a loss for us there but heading back home Rotherham last home game obviously was the loss to Brentford wanted to make amends here and get back to winning ways taking on the Millers felt very confident again these are the games we should definitely be targeting three points against side two aren't the best in the league and are either below us or around us in the table. Took the lead through Eamon Cunningham, 1-0 Cork, and this is exactly why I've made this guy my captain. Game winner against Preston, but it's not the goals that's given him the armband. It's this sort of stuff. You don't see this during the game. You don't see it because I don't include these highlights, but he does this all the time. He's throwing his body in, way, in the way of shots all the time, blocking everything. He makes so many interceptions during the game. What's that quote? Like 80% of the earth's surface is covered by water. The rest is covered by Rory Keenan. That genuinely is how it feels man this guy's literally everywhere on the pitch so much energy and a great defense minded player so he gets it at 1-0 there and then just past the hour mark I think it was Samuel Bell Bell gets another goal 
Little Cork, as we know, the Cam Rhea now shows great potential. And he stepped up quite nicely from League onto the Championship as well. I don't think he'll win the Golden Boot this year. He's not had the red hot start he had last year in League One. I highly doubt he'll get close to winning the Golden Boot, but no doubt about it, he'll certainly be our top scorer this year once again. So Cork 2, Rotherham 0, back to winning ways there against the Millers Weekly. That's a big, big three points. Heading to our final game of today's episode, travelling to the Den, stake on Millwall in South East London here. Really, really important game once again with both teams right next to each other in the table. 71 minutes in, Leo almost scored again from the corner, rattling the crossbar as it was still 0-0. Now with four minutes to go, still deadlocked. Tom Bradshaw finds Tyler Berry. Very good young talent. Keep your eyes on him in real life. Very good young talent indeed. And unfortunately, the youngster scores a late game winner as the Lions get a big three point. So final score in SE 16, Millwall 1, Cork City 0. Disappointing defeat there and again, Leo almost won it for us with that header from the corner there. So hard to stop, but sadly off the bar. And then Barry wins it to leapfrog us, uh, for the Lions to leapfrog us in the table. As you can see, 16 games in, we are coming towards the halfway point. 20th place after a bit of a tough run of form, but still, I think it's five points above the drop zone. So, we have slid down the table a little bit, we're still way clear of the bottom three, which is the most important thing for me. But I went to tip to the court to glory, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Cork to Glory.